<laughs> okay, we'd like to welcome everyone to this meeting of the Orem City Planning Commission. Uh, we welcome all of you here and, and uh, I've asked Mr. Walker to offer an invocation for us today. Our Father in heaven, as we bow our heads this day, we express gratitude to thee for the opportunity we have, a, have to be here and able to discuss the needs of this, the city in which we live, Orem. Father, we're grateful for this city, for our friends and neighbors, and the opportunity we have to live and raise our families here. We ask that thou will bless us this day, that we might discuss those needs that come before us, that we might recognize one another's opinions and be able to discuss these matters. Father, we're grateful for the time that's been spent to present this meeting, and we're grateful for those that have done it. We ask that thou will bless us and be with us, and say these things in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, we remind everyone that we're still our broadcast on YouTube. And with that, we'll uh, begin with item 3.1. Item 3.1 is a public hearing. This is a request to vacate lot 14 of lots, lots, subdivision, plat A, and approve the preliminary plat and final plat of Mountain Valley Estate Subdivision Plat B at 850 West, 1860 North in the R8 zone and R6 zone. Here you see the aerial photo of the, uh, the project. <clears throat> Property outlined in blue, that is currently a, the lot that's plat in the subdivision. That's what has to be vacated before we can replat into to four more lots. As you can see there on the left and the right, 880 West uh, has, does not go through at this time. The subdivision will complete the installation of 880 West. There will then be two lots on the west side of 880 and two lots on the east side. And then the home that's currently there now will, will then exist as lot number five. Uh, the right side, as you see lots three and four, those were recently rezoned to R6 to facilitate the two lots there. Otherwise, it would have been one lot very large and narrow, or excuse me, wide R8 lot. So City Council rezoned that to R6 to, to get the two lots in there. Then the west side, lot one and lot two, those will be the R8 zone, and lot five is also the R8 zone as well. This is the preliminary plat, and then a little cleaner version of the final plat you see here. Okay, um, we've seen this before on the adjacent properties. And so any questions that anyone has for Mr. Stroud? Okay, is the applicant present? Is there anything you'd like to add? No, <coughs> I just appreciate your help and thanks for all your help. Okay, thank you. This is a public hearing. So we'll go ahead and open the public hearing. If anyone would like to speak to this item, please step to the microphone, state your name and your residence, and limit your comments to three minutes. Doesn't look like it'll be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing no one come to the microphone, we'll close the public, public hearing and bring it back to the commission. <laughs> Any other comments? Or Are we ready to make a motion? Well, I'll make a motion. Um, I move for the vacation of lot 14 of lots, lots, subdivision A, and approve the preliminary plat and final plat of Mountain Valley Estate subdivision plat B at 850 West and 1860 North. Thank you. Ms. Jeffries makes a, a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Cochran seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Item 3.2. 3.2 is also a public hearing. This is a request by a citizen to amend the deep lot, let me get the feedback, the deep lot uh, subdivision ordinance, uh, more specifically 17-8-1C7. Uh, back in 2007, the city council amended the, the deep lot ordinance to state that after that point, any house built on a deep lot could not be greater than one story. A few years after that, an applicant who had a very large deep lot came in and said, well, I've got this huge lot. I want to be able to do a two-story. So then the council came back and, and, and uh, amended the orders to have what you, you see as, as letter A right now. Letter A is basically just what's been struck out in the paragraph above. Uh, 
So if you, in letter A, so if you have a 15,000 square foot lot, deep lot, that's the body of the lot, you can go two stories if you have 25 foot setbacks all around. Well, we had an applicant or a citizen come in and want to do an addition to his house. He's on a deep lot now, and we had to tell him as of the code, the code right now, you can't do a two lot, or excuse me, a two story addition to your house. And he decided to go through the process to amend the ordinance. And so what is proposed here was kind of a letter B was kind of worked out between myself, the city attorney, and, and the applicant. Uh, basically says, if you have a two-story house prior to that date in 2007, you can do a two-story addition, provided you meet the setbacks that are in the, in the ordinance right now. Uh, so if you have a single-story home on a deep lot that was built in 2000 or whatever, prior to 2000, you would not be able to do a two-story. This only apply to an existing two-story house built prior to March 13, 2007. This would then allow that owner to then, if they, in this case, to, to come in and do that, that two-story addition because they already have two stories now. Okay. Any questions? This, there are some other lots in the city besides this particular Yeah, we, we initially yeah. looked at, we were kind of tossed around a, a square footage at one time. We had a, a 12,000 square foot number here, and we had the GIS, our, our intern, actually plot the number of 12,000 square foot deep lots. He came up with around 100. Um, so this would, you know, are, are a lot of them going to do two-story additions? Probably not. That's probably what really the effect or cause any very few to actually do a two-story addition. And the mitigating factor is setting back from the property line. <coughs> you have that too. For yeah, they have to have the, 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 the standard setbacks of that zone in which they're located. Okay. Any other questions? Is the applicant present? <laughs> Anything you would like to add? If you could, if you have a comment, please step to the microphone and give us your name, please. Jeremy Wilkie. Um, I don't have too much more to add. I just want to, um, again, thanks for the time spent to work with Dave and the other people to uh, work this out. I mean, I, generally speaking, we're just kind of looking for, hey, this feels like something that seems reasonable to grandfather in since you know we've already got the existing two-story house um and our lot the lots around it at the time were all also all developed at the same time or reasonably thereafter much before the uh before this and you know i'm sure there are exceptions to that around the city as far as a few lots not being developed at the same time as as others but uh that our lot and the lots around that were going to be basically planned around the original zoning ordinances and setbacks and everything. And so um, with that in mind, it, uh, there was also grandfathering basically of the setbacks at the time. There's a carve out for the setbacks at the beginning of the uh, ordinance uh, to say, you know, if, if the house was built before this date, then these setbacks apply. But if it's new, um, these new setbacks apply and then uh, the, the one story came in with that whole thing. And so basically, uh, I feel like it, it, it sounds like a reasonable uh, a thing, amendment to have this as a, as a subsequent gra grandfathering clause to kind of fall in line with that whole spirit of what, what happened back in 2007 with that uh, ordinance to change the, the deep lots. Any questions for Mr. Wilkie? Thank you. Okay, thank you. This is a public hearing, so we'll go ahead and open the public hearing and invite anyone who would like to speak to this subject to step to the microphone. Seeing no one coming to the microphone, we'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the commission for any comments or a recommendation. This, this seems pretty common sense to me and to grandfather. It just makes a lot of sense. It, it, it only seems right, and I mean, as far as I go, I'm, my thought process is making common sense. I'm not speaking for the group as a whole, but no, I, I think so as well. This is a recommendation to the city council. Well, I'll make a recommendation if you'd like. Okay. To. I'll make a recommendation that we send a positive recommendation amending section 17-8-1 C7 of the Orem City Code pertaining to residential deep lot development standards. Mr. Walker's made a motion. I'll second that motion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Item 
3.3, again, another public hearing. <clears throat> this is a request by D.R. Horton to make changes to 22-11-S23B and Appendix X. Now, this is the PD-11 zone on South Sand Hill Road. Uh, the PD-11 zone was approved, oh boy, 10, 12 years ago, probably, uh, for townhomes. Uh, nothing has been built. Uh, the original developer of that at that time still is the property owner. And he's gone through various uh, offers on the property, some more serious than the others. And we've come to, the, to this now where D.R. Horton is one of those serious offers to purchase the property. Um, and as in any builder typically goes, a builder has their own product they would like to build. Uh, they do not, do not want to build the approved, what are the approved elevations in Appendix X. They like to have their own elevations. So they're here tonight to request a few text amendments and uh, revise the concept plan and revise the building elevations. Now, the, the major change tonight would be uh, the, the building elevations. The property in question, again, PD-11 zone. <clears throat> this here is the revised concept plan. It is, is very similar to the, uh, the approved concept plan access points routing around the buildings, the location of the clubhouse, the common uh, amenities in the, the green area in the middle, all very similar to what's, what's approved in the ordinance right now, but this would have to be amended as well as part of the project. And you can see um, uh, they've anticipated any future development. If DR Horton does pick this up, they'd surely like to, to pick up the rest of the property on Sand Hill Road and then continue uh, these townhomes, rezone that property and continue these townhomes through that, the remainder of that property. So this development here in this concept plan anticipates, at least at some point in the future, somebody will pick up that additional property and then continue uh, the PD zone. To the is, is that second, the second phase? No, part it, of the PD eleven now, or what yeah, fa that? phase one and two are, are what's what's the PD eleven right now? Okay. Uh, they would look at it and they would do the phase one first with the clubhouse and those amenities, and then phase two would be the the east side of the project. It looked like there was also some property on Sand Hill Road that is part of that. Yeah, there, there is. You can see uh, on the zone map here, up on that uh, northwest corner, the two blue rectangles, those are existing houses right now where the owner's not at this time interested in selling. I believe those are rental houses right now. The owner does not live there. Uh, the first green square you see right above the first PD-11, when this originally came through for the rezone, that property owner there backed out the day before it went to the council, said, I don't want to be in the zone anymore. Uh, that's also a rental house there too. Mm. Um, but eventually we'd like to see those, those other, those green areas uh, come into the PD-11 zone. And again, this concept plan anticipates that with the, uh, with traffic, you know, you could run traffic, you know, through here to come back around, loop through, excuse me, loop through there loop down through here uh, for any, any road connections in the future. So that opportunity will, will be there. I don't know why I'm missing some of my text here. It's been shifted. All right. I didn't do it. I'm, pick, I'm fixing it right here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so the text changes is kind of a, the bullet summary of what they're proposing, the text changes. The density would increase from 14 to 14 and a half units per acre. Uh, if you look at the density paragraph there, right now they'd have 146 units on 10.15. There's a piece that was originally configured in the current concept plan, about half an acre, which has now been pulled out of this, the new concept plan, so the acreage, overall acreage is reduced. Uh, ultimately, they would, they would be looking at 14.38 units per acre, round up to what they want of 14.5 uh, for the proposed density change. The approved concept plan right now has 149 units on 10.65, which gives it just under 14 per acre. So overall, yes, you're losing square footage, um, and you're also reducing the number of units. The property that's not in this request, that's in the current concept plan, did not have any units on that property. It was just a narrow strip of landscaping was what it was. Um, <clears throat> uh, garage setbacks to a public street. There's no, there's no garage that now face a public street. So that text is, is coming out. Um, setbacks of 20 feet or one unit to an existing barn on the adjacent property. Uh, the original concept plan 
did not show the encroachment of a barn on the south property line. That barn was anticipated to be removed from, from the Petersons. That barn is now not going to be removed, and so they want to have a change where at least one unit, or only one unit, would have a 20-foot setback to that barn. The rest would be 25. Uh, water and sewer will now become private. The current text of the ordinance does call it out as being public. Uh, the city does not want to maintain the water and sewer lines within the project. Uh, alleys would be between 28 and 36 feet between units. Uh, Three-story pitches of the roof and the two-story pitches would be 412 and 612. And then the proposed materials would be uh, uh, cementitious siding, which they, they could have lap, board and batten, shingle siding, uh, stucco masonry, which could be stone or brick, and then uh, your asphalt shingles. This is a color map representing the different types of units and where they're located in the project. And we'll go through uh, a few slides here which will identify what are the green, what are the blue, what are the purple, what are the yellow. Uh, basically the green would be a three-story traditional and then the uh, blue would be a three-story uh, traditional. Well, the stone would be the, the green. So basically you're looking at the three-story units would be the green and the blue. It would be along Sand Hill Road and then the interior of the project. And then what you see in what appears to be yellow and purple, those will be then the two-story units. We don't know what's going to be on the, the perimeter of, of this, or excuse me, outside this project. It's currently zoned R12. Most likely 12,000 square foot lots are not going to come in to the project, but likely you could have you know, R8 lots there, single family lots. So on the perimeter where it could be against potential R8 lots, they'd be two-story townhomes along, along those sides. So the green units you see here, these are a little bit of a work in progress. Uh, you can see the lower left, which would be the, the rear the, the rear load for the garages. Those elevations will need to change a little bit, and the applicant is working on that right now uh, to get some more, re more relief, more types of architectural elements, uh, especially on that center wall you see there. And so they did inform us say they're still working on that. Uh, these are some more of the elevations of ones they've actually built uh, in the state here. Uh, units up in the, the Salt Lake Valley. Hmm. These then are now their two story units. This would be the craftsman style. They have a craftsman style and a farmhouse style. And this is one of the elevations that we asked the applicant to improve upon. That lower left rear elevation you can see there was originally all stucco. Uh, we said we'd like to see that dressed up a bit more, so they did do on the pop-outs, they did change that stucco to what you see is the kind of a the red band and the, the darker tan would are all a, a siding material. in the farmhouse style. Again, examples that they've actually built here in, uh, in Utah. Again, that lower right picture, that would then be improved upon by adding uh, siding to those pop-outs on that lower right. But it, it has in this drawing here, Right there, you can see that the pop-outs in the rear do have the, the siding, the, the two, two blue, the lighter blue and the darker blue. But just to give an example of something that's as built uh, would be right here. Mm -hmm. In the mm -hmm. story, this would be along the perimeter. Again, revised, revised elevations as far as the materials. Questions for Mr. Stroud. What are the what are the height limitations in this development in this zone? Do you know? Off my head, I want to say it's still 35. 
is that is that the reason for the change in pitch of the two different styles to your knowledge or is it uh, do you think it's th architecture obviously it could be because you go to a three-story you know if you have a if you put a 612 on a three-star architecturally it may not look that well anyway but it yeah. very well could have been because of the height yeah I, I was just wondering why they would change that yeah. pitch and, and the two-story the, two the 612 is a good pitch for that yeah yeah the snow loads and stuff that's kind of what you worry about but that's their thing do, is n everything still the same on 1430 South Street as far as curb and gutter and distillerations and all the street improvements yeah, and stuff? All, yeah. Nothing changes? You had questions about what's happening on 1430 South? Yeah, when we approved this, whenever it was, some time ago, they put in the deceleration lanes and all yeah, the urban this, gutter, and it, I assume that's all just stayed the same? This is the same plan for 1430 South, and yeah. with site, with, along with site plan approval, we'll have the developer do the widening for 1430 South. One of the things that I've noticed on the concept plan, though, is that you'll see where the property line goes through that area and it's kind of going instead of the, the back of the curb on the road it's, the red it's going through halfway through those deceleration lanes yeah through the street that's not right it the concept plan should be changed so that at a minimum the property line is at the back of the curb on the street you can kind of see too that it, you know it, in some areas it's much you know there's some area between there's some area in the park strip. Anyway, the property line uh, corrections need to be made See. on the concept okay. plan before we before we go to the city council. Any other questions? Uh, and then here here on the con this is the actual concept plan. There they are showing some uh, diagonal lines for which would be road dedication. So it would go back to the back of curb on the concept plan here. So the line that's shown there is the existing right-of-way line at this time? Um, I'm not sure exactly what that line is, but again, it, uh, what, what basically we're doing is we're going from a two-lane road to a three-lane road, plus the ability to have bike lanes on each side of the street. Um, and then we'll also have deceleration lanes into, into both access points. So I might understand that that the some of the uh, changes, elevation changes, as far as uh, I can feel, have not yet been submitted to the city. Yeah, they're working on, like I said, the, the elevation, the rear elevations of the, the three-story units now is. This is the applicant, Chriselle Travis from DR Horton. She can expound on that. Okay. So on the three stories, we are working on it. We got this information a little bit late. Um, and so we are working on it. The, the, ex, the concern from staff was that, as you see in that bottom left-hand corner, mm -hmm. it, where it recesses back, it's pretty flat and yeah. straight. Um, we haven't built a building exactly like we're going to be building here. So we are drawing new drawings and feverishly working through the night to get things done so that we can have it over to the city. And and we will be adding, so the, where you see the blue siding on those two outside corners, we'll extend the siding through that portion of the building so that'll carry all the way through. Stuckel will be on the third story. And somewhere in between there, we'll do some pop-outs with either the windows or we'll do an architectural relief. You can kind of see on this, the, the corner, we've got kind of like an eyebrow awning yeah. kind of a thing. We may continue that through the back or at the bottom, just above the garages, you can see that there's a roof line yeah. that's been added. We're looking at those right now, but our design people are still working on that because we haven't exactly built the same building, but we will have that before we move forward to city council and give time to staff to review that. Great. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Anything else you'd like to add? Um, to, to further expand on the question that was asked of Paul and the line that is shown, um, can you flip back to the black and white site plan? So if you see, is there a pointer? <laughs> we don't believe in pointing. So on that 1430, <laughs> you can see there's a little bit of a hatched space. Yeah.
Um, we do anticipate, so we've shown the exact property line as it exists today. We do anticipate that there will need to be further dedication of that roadway upon the site plan approval. So that hatched area that you see indicated there is the extra dedication to that roadway for the bike lanes and the deceleration that you were asking for. Um, the other little change and the reason for the density was um, other, other end, okay. <laughs> right down here in this location, this property line used to jog kind of like that. Mm -hmm. um, the adjacent property owner, he's also the owner of the barn, he has a historic um, access drive out aisle through there. So to resolve that issue, we'll be deeding that land to him. So that caused an extra bit to be lost as well as the parcel that David mentioned, um, which is this one right here this parcel right here. So those two pieces have been removed from the overall space that we're using and that's what's caused the density to go up. But other than that. With that description of where the property lines are now, I think there needs to be some calculations to make sure that when that dedication happens, they not moving themselves out of the 14.5 unit per acre. And we've accounted for that. We've done our calculations based on the right of way, not the property line. Okay. Just to go back, one thing you did mention, you looked right here, that little pop out there, that's where that barn yeah. uh, is right now. So this unit right here, that would be the only unit that would then have a 20 foot setback just to account for where that barn sits. Hopefully, eventually, that barn will go away. But as of now, Initially, 10, 12 years ago when this first came through, they said, yeah, we'll take the barn down. They don't want to now, so that'll, that'll stay in the meantime. Looks like the setback is only on the corner. Yes, yeah, yeah. it's just that one corner that encroaches. And to, to allow him to have access to that barn, we will grant an access easement through our roadways and up across that open space so that he can paint, maintain, fix whatever he needs to on that, on that side of that. Can you charge him a toll for that? Can we charge him a toll? Just wonder. <laughs> We'd like, no, because we're trying to purchase the rest of his property. <laughs> <laughs> so we have on the, the P, you guys had questions on the colored map for the PD zone. And David did explain the, the, the three lots that are um, rental properties. The rest of them are owned by Mr. Peterson or his family and we have offered him, we've given him an LOI and are just waiting for his response. Okay. So we are hopefully moving forward in anticipation that we get a good recommendation from you and council and we can move forward on this project. But. Yeah, then this plan here you can kind of see the potential layout uh, the units outlined there in kind of orange, yellow, what potentially how they could lay out if that, the rest of that property then does come into the PD zone. That's nice. Okay. Thank you. Before we open the public hearing, I just want to announce or make you aware that the PEG item that was originally scheduled uh, for this evening, this afternoon, uh, which is the project by UVU, has been continued to the 7th of June. Uh, so if any of you are here for that project, um, it will not be on the agenda today, but we'll will uh, be on the agenda on 7th. Okay, thank you. Um, this is a public hearing, so we will go ahead and open the public hearing on item 3.3. If anyone would like to speak to the subject, please uh, step to the microphone. Seeing no one coming to the microphone, we will close the public hearing, bring it back to the commission for any other questions or comments. Okay. I I don't really have any questions. I'm just wondering if we've got incomplete elevations and uh, concern over the property line and then the possibility of the density of this thing. You're saying you've accounted for the density, that it wouldn't exceed. I guess that could always be put in a stipulation that won't exceed that density. But, I, I, yeah, it's hard to approve something if we don't have the full information, do we? Or can we? Yeah, and I, and I my thought has been pending a receipt of final elevations as you're working on right now. Correct. We're hoping that you guys can give us a positive recommendation with the condition that we work with staff and get a submittal in prior to city council that they're, they're comfortable with. 
Well, our recommendation either way, as, as you understand, can change mm -hmm. between now and, and when you meet with city council. So. Great. When is this, when is this supposed to go to city council? Next week. This next week? Oh, I'm sure you guys can do that. So, <laughs> so could a positive recommendation be sent through with the stipulations of complete elevations, completed elevations, the property lines resolved? Yeah, the, the Planning Commission in the past has done similar things like that where things are not completely finalized and they said, well, you know, don't want to brag about it, say, we'll, we'll trust staff to look at it and say, okay, conceptually we like what's there, there will be changes to the, to the elevations, we'll go ahead and, and, and recommend approval and let staff work out the, the, the final details. Or could we, could we word it on a motion the opposite way, saying pending... Uh, receipt of uh, approved elevations you know that will spend through a negative if the planning commission wants to review them you'll have to continue it to another meeting so if you want to see the elevations it would need to be in another public hearing before the planning commission if you I for one trust the staff. If, if we trust the staff then it would go next Tuesday if not no. if you don't trust the staff <laughs> you want to take it to the <laughs> first meeting in June I'm turning my mic off right now <laughs> but it would be able to go to, but with that kind of wording, the stipulations, it wouldn't be able to go before the city council. We would have to continue. Tuesday, it'd have, it'd have to be continued. Correct. If you did not approve what they come so back with. If, and, and I'm okay. I mean, the planning commission wants to see the elevations. You just need to continue, and we'll have to continue the city council meeting into June. So, I mean, that's an option. The other option is to approve it subject to us. The changes he's talked about are made prior to Tuesday's meeting with the city council. I don't see any point in holding it. Um, we've done this before. We trust the staff. Mm -hmm. I think I think we should just move forward. Well, yeah, we have an interest in seeing this done, completed. <laughs> the, the configuration <laughs> hasn't changed significantly. I mean, the conceptually, no. Like I said, the the they reduced some of the asphalt. The the, the roads, buildings here on the south, these purple and yellow on the south. Pretty much, that's the same as what was approved. But yet, there was actually a road on the south or south of the buildings themselves. So they got rid of that asphalt running along the south perimeter, um, things like that. Very minor, really conceptual changes. But the 14.5 is part of the PD11, is that correct? 14, it's 5, 14, 14 now. They would request to go to 14.5 because their density is like 14.38. So does that need to be a stipulation in here too? That we're it's just what you, part of your recommendation. You recommend those changes that are bullet oh, pointed here it's send a pocket yeah. send a positive recommendation that becomes yeah. part of that yeah your your but, the, but the request we, is to amend the text yeah and then amend the the appendix for the new concept plan and new elevations and then we'd have to add pending completed yeah. elevations yes. to the and staff's approval by staff yeah approval by staff and yes property lines also are we concerned about property lines over there or is that part of the LA? I think we I think we've got it on the record that their intent is to when when the road is built the uh, the property lines get to move to the back of the curb. Okay. Okay. So it's just a completed elevations meeting the staff's yeah. approval. Mm -hmm. okay. Gosh, I think that sounds good too. So is anybody ready to make a motion? Pending the ability to make a motion correctly. <laughs> Um, I can make a motion. Correctly? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think. Staff, staff, I always had to ask the staff to help me on some of these, so oh. I always get the help. Well, I'll make a recommendation that we forward a positive recommendation to the City Council to amend Section 22-11-23B and Appendix X of the Orem City Code pertaining to the development standards of PD11 zone at 1430 South Sand Hill Road um, with the provision that uh, the elevations will be updated according to uh, staff's recommendations and approved by staff. Should we add a, if, if not approved, then we'll continue it to. No, just no. because it's okay. pending that, yeah, oh. right. I think. Um, okay, okay. Ms. Jeffries has made a motion. I will second. Ms. Buxton seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Item 
Thank you so much for taking it. Hello, uh, my name is Kirby Snyderman, Long Range City Planner here with Orem. And <clears throat> I'll give a brief presentation, five to ten minutes, about uh, another thing we're trying to do on State Street, which is uh, over time, as properties are redeveloped, we would like to increase the connectivity by adding additional street connections. If you recall, the State Street Master Plan called for uh, recommended increasing the connectivity along State Street. What is connectivity? Connectivity or permeability refers to the directness of links and the density of connections in a transportation network. A highly permeable network has many short links, numerous intersections, and minimal dead ends. Why is connectivity important? Well, there's several reasons because it reduces travel time, creates shorter routes, and that reduces traffic. It uh, reduces speeds where important, especially uh, when people are turning off, and reduces accident severity. It creates more frontage for retail, There's more access for retail. Provides greater emergency vehicle access and reduces emergency response times. So great for firefighters and, and police officers trying to do their responsibility. Provide, it provides improved utility connections, easier maintenance, and more efficient trash and recycling pickup, and it better accommodates uh, future transit use, um, enabling more people to get to transit when it one day will reach State Street. Let me run through a few of those examples. On the left, uh, these two examples come from the Northwest. Uh, one is a grid system. Uh, they're, they're both in Washington. One's a grid system in Seattle, and one's in a in Bellevue, Washington, Bellevue, Washington, which is a suburb. If you look on the left, you can see they're both one mile from the star. And you can see in a grid network where there's multiple connections, a one mile distance you can reach much further, whereas in a more, uh, an area with less connections, you, that area where you can travel in one mile is actually decreased. <clears throat> this is from the Northridge, Heatheridge, and Windsor plan. Uh, this is just to demonstrate the kind of accident severity you get when, uh, when you decrease access because you funnel so much traffic through uh, fewer intersections. If you look on State Street, and, that, and that's on the left there, the red line, um, the circles show the number of accidents. These are hit and runs. These are accidents that include hit and runs, property damage, and personal injury accidents. Along all of that corridor on State Street from 1200 North to 2000 North, there, there were 121 accidents in 2015. If you look just at the intersections, 13 of those occurred at 1200 North, 65 occurred at 1600 North, the intersection of State Street and 1600 North, 19 occurred at the intersection of 2000 North and State Street. You can see 65 accidents on 1600 North and State Street. It's because that's a uh, there's, this is one of the sections along, along State Street that has the fewest number of connections and it requires a lot of funneling and uh, as a consequence there are a greater number of accidents. Here's just an example of uh, for what connectivity does for retail. This is from The Lease Coach written by Dave Williton who's a retail expert. He writes in his book, for retail tenants considering the perfect space, the magic word is frontage. The exposed area and fascia of windows that prospective customers walking or driving by can see from the road. So when, when we're proposing adding these new connections, which I'll show you a map in a little bit, one of the concerns might be, well, how are property owners going to feel about this? Well, I can tell you retail owners would be excited about this, not meaning it's going to always be easy in every case, but adding more connectivity, adding more access is something that uh, uh, retail developers would love. and. Uh, uh, be all about. Um, next step in this process, currently we're working with UDOT. As you may be aware, State Street does not belong to the City of Orem, it belongs to the State of Utah. It's managed by the Utah Department of Transportation. We're currently working with them. I just received a draft this week from them that creates an agreement between us and them that stipulates things we can do, and included in that is these connections that I'm about to show you. So they've looked at this and they've said, okay, yes. We, uh, that's fine with us, as long as some of the things that they're agreeing to to make State Street more pedestrian friendly. Um, so what we're asking uh, today is that 
the map that I'm about to show you and a small amount of text which explains this map be adopted as part of the, or, or it's going to amend the following plans, the Transportation Master Plan, the State Street Master Plan, the Street Connection Master Plan, and also the General Plan. It's not written there, but all four of those documents will get this map included and then a little bit of uh, text that will um, explain that in each document. And, <clears throat> and then what happens? Then uh, we're also requesting that the, general, that the code be amended to allow us to require developers to put these roads, these street connections, on site plans. So if a developer wants to do something uh, on a site that has one of these roads, then they would re be required to show this future road on their site plan. That doesn't mean we would require them to put that road in then. That would still be something we negotiate. We're, we want to be very realistic about putting these roads in. We don't want to, we don't want to overburden a property owner. We want to wait for an opportunity when redevelopment occurs. And we're looking at possible sources of funding to do this that may at some point allow us to approach a developer and say, hey, we, we have the opportunity, we have some funding, we could put in a few roads, we're thinking about yours, what do you think? We don't want to just take and bulldoze and put in roads. We want to work with developers to put these in uh, where they make sense. Uh, you've seen this before. This is the map of where these connections would go. Uh, there are several, and we're even including, if you see uh, in the park, we're including a future walking path that maybe could su serve a dual purpose as occasionally being open to road traffic for something of an event. But um, uh, again, these are all just plans. Uh, these aren't, these wouldn't have to happen, but they could allow the city an opportunity to pursue these as they make sense. And uh, there's not an extreme amount of these. Uh, staff went through these with Public Works and with the Development uh, Department staff. We really tried to look at where does it make sense? Where would possible redevelopment occur in the next 20 to 30 years? So we're, we're not considering connections where it's just never going to happen. We just, we, we had more than these and we worked down to the numbers, the number of connections that made more sense. Any questions? On the concept here? Or I was just wondering, on 200 North and State, I know that at, a, at an earlier time that they were going to have a signal there. That's not indicated on this particular. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 200 North and State, there was going to be a signal. I think that's on the uh, master plan that was pre presented earlier. The transportation master plan huh? uh, could have more than this. This is not everything. Okay. This is just some things pertaining to connectivity, and um, these would be an amendment to the okay. transportation master plan. So this would be in above anything else that's planned. What's the rationale for the removal of the light at 1200 South and State that goes across into the mall right now? Paul's getting his microphone ready. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, that traffic signal that's at the mall right now is uh, really too close to the right. main intersection of the Parkway and State Street. And uh, we're, UDOT and the city would really like to move that further to the north. We shared those desires with the Woodbury Corporation, and they do have, they're working on building a road and have made some of the first phase improvements on that road that will connect 1150 South, uh, kind of over and take a jog and connect over to, to 8th East. Yeah. It'll, that, that, ro that road is not shown on this connection plan because it's already agreed to in the uh, Woodbury PD zone. Uh, but the, uh, the location of that uh, future signal is, is something that is in, in agreement by both jurisdictions. So would that be a right turn only? All of you thought about that? Yeah, the, uh, t that's why we need to have a, yeah, a new street that connects over to Orem Boulevard because you're not going to be able to have all of your turning movements at that location yeah. with the removal of the signal. And a lot of those turning movements would move up to that, up to that new intersection. And, and again, if you can picture in your mind, I don't know if you know where the new park is yep, at the I mall do. on the north end of the mall. There's that, there's that new road. Uh, 
uh, it's if you drive through there, you'll see the street name signs that call that call it Park Avenue. Right. Park Avenue Road will go from where that new signal is proposed and over to you can see a future signal over on Eighth East. Right. But that road still stays private. Is that correct? Park road, road still stays private, but it is open for public use. What I, I guess it's just throwing the question out. Is there anything that stops the developer from shutting that road down? They can still shut it down for uh, kind of like the LDS Church does. They'll they'll sometimes close access to keep their one day a year to be able to keep control over it. But a lot of these roads, it's it's still going to be up into the air about you know what are these going to be private or public? Well, they can be private as long as they're. Uh, open for public traffic and uh, these roads may have different typical sections they may have different right-of-way widths they you know they may have different uh, pedestrian treatments landscaping treatments what we're doing again is we're just trying to show where it's going to be it makes sense to have a better grid network system next to state street we have a really grid network is kind of you move out into the neighborhoods but then it falls apart as you as you approach the state street area and as uh, kirby uh, mentioned we we think that's going to help in the kind of a more of an urban development scheme along the state street yes corridor. and if i could add a, a couple things one is the most uh, important part of this is the start the beginning and the end although the text will will make that that's included in this map will make it clear that that this is not the lines as they're drawn here are not exact that this is more an approximate that we'd like access here the other thing about funding is we it, when roads would be installed they would not the developer would not pay the full cost of these the developer would pay their proportionate share of these the city would be responsible for the rest unless it was the case where we weren't ready to put one of these in because we didn't have the funding but the developer really wanted it well then we could work out an agreement where Either that was paid in full by the developer or paid in advance by the developer and he was reimbursed. We have some flexibility there, but I can tell you that there would be developers excited about the opportunity of, of increasing connectivity. I, I really like this. I, I'm super interested in that roundabout at 700 North and Warren Boulevard because I know Paul loves roundabouts. I know he managed to get one in there. What was the <laughs> rationale for putting it there? Just curious. Paul. Paul was the... <clears throat> Yeah, our, our traffic engineer, traffic operations engineer thinks that that would be the best solution for that intersection. And so uh, to keep in good graces with him, I, I like to support him and back him up you know, every now and again. That also allows us easier access to get back down to 8th North to go down to I-15 too, doesn't it, without having to cross traffic? Isn't that the road where you jog down to 4th West and come on at a light? Yeah, you come to the light. The, yeah, the, yeah that, that road, that 700 north over at State Street, that's where the big old tires is, and there's just a little road that goes over and it crosses Orem Boulevard, it crosses uh, 4th West. There is the traffic signal at 4th West. So, yes, you could get, uh, right now, there's just a two-way stop at that location, and it's yeah. kind of a, a it, funny angled intersection. with. Uh, and it's, it's become more pragmatic because you've got the light on 4th West and 8th North to access to go left, whereas you come down Orem Boulevard, you can only make a right, as I remember. In fact, I know you can. Only right. make a right. Now, yeah, Orem Boulevard and 800 North is just right in and right out because of the raised median. Option. Yes, yeah. Isn't that one of those spots, too, where it says cross traffic doesn't stop? Uh, yes, that's one of those fun locations where it has to, where there's the sign under the stop sign reminds you that it's not a four-way stop. And those angles are really bad, right? There. Those angles. And again, that's why we think that the roundabout might be the best solution at that intersection. Mm -hmm. one, one last comment I'll make is that ideally, uh, at some point when we update our transportation master plan, this will then be incorporated. So that's not a separate uh, document. It's just until that happens, we want to make sure we get this in. And this could be added to. And if it does, we'll go through the same process. Uh, to add additional street connections in the future. But these are the ones most likely, most important, prioritized uh, additional street connections on State Street. And um, it's a good start. I was noticing the future walking path, there's only just that one 
what, like half a block? Is that the only, are, are you wanting more of walking paths but, or are you just figuring getting people to State Street and Orem Boulevard, they're gonna just have all that walking going on there, the pedestrian friendly Please stuff? That was one, we had identified more, but then we scaled that back saying, you know, that, uh, maybe we should, maybe we should um, prioritize. That I would anticipate there would be more in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, one that's being looked at is one with the city center plan um, that would be involved over here in the, the park on this property. So there could be more as well. It's, it's uh, for the most part, a new concept in Orem. We haven't, well, you might think of a pedestrian path like as a trail, but this is not what that would be. This would be a pedestrian only road uh, where there's limited access for pedestrians and bikes. Something concept like that could be included more in the future. Well, it, it's the idea of all these uh, connections that people would be able to walk there and, that, and that, get through, the in, pedestrians would be able to get through there, and, so, and this would be just pedestrians, not any... Primarily pedestrian, yeah. but there could be temper, you know, sometimes of the year when it's open for vehicle traffic or special oh. occasions. Just if I could, uh, what we were visioning there through Sarah Park there is basically something similar to what uh, Kirby just said, something that we could maybe take some ballards out of the ground and let food trucks in there for certain occasions on this path mm. and let pedestrians walk through there, go to the food trucks, enjoy the park, enjoy the pool. And then when we don't have that activity, the, the ballards go back in the ground and there's no trap vehicle traffic, but bikes and pedestrians can continue to use that. But more than just a path, it's a look, it would look more like a street, have a look and feel mm. of a street. Nicely landscaped and all the kind of fun stuff on it. That'd be trees. Fun. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of trees in there already. Mm. Huh. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions? This is a public hearing, and so we'll go ahead and open the public hearing and invite anyone who would like to speak to come forward. Only one possibility, and I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing, bring it back to the commission then. Any other comments or thoughts? Or I can make a motion. motion? Okay. Uh, I move that we send a positive recommendation to the City Council for amending the Orem City General Plan, Orem State Street Master Plan, Orem Transportation Master Plan, and the Orem Street Connection Master Plan pertaining to the future street connections near State Street and amending the Orem City Code to facilitate corridor preservation for these streets. Ms. Buxton has made a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Cochran has seconded. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, let's go to the minutes. These are the minutes from the May 3rd Planning Commission meeting. Any corrections or changes that need to be made to those? Okay, if not, I will make a motion that we approve the minutes from the May 3rd Planning Commission meeting. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Buxton second. Or Miss Jeffrey second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Director's minute. Is this a minute or a oh, message? Baby. <laughs> Short one. You know me. <laughs> uh, just to give you a little uh, uh, heads up. Uh, Last week, we uh, staff and uh, a few of the city council uh, paid a visit to Portland, Oregon, uh, to uh, and, and walked through. This is pertaining to the district plans on, on State Street. We wanted to show the council our vision and our idea of what we kind of want it to look like in the future. And uh, pictures just won't do it justice. So we took them to Portland, walked through uh, some. Pearl District uh, is an old district, warehouse district in Portland that had some great ideas. And then we took them to a city called Hillsboro, Oregon. It's pretty much the same size as us, have a lot of the same similarities. They have an old so-called State Street. They've just, uh, 20 years ago, they built a brand new uh, 
City Hall that looks still brand new today. It's just a, f a phenomenal building. We took him there and walked through and then walked through this new development. It's called, uh, what's it called? Ar Arinko Station. Basically, it's a track stop and it starts with some really higher density at the track stop. And so we're saying this is, could be our State Street. And when I say real high density, it's retail at the bottom and it was very new and it's full. I mean, it's just people all over, very active. Above that was residential. And so we're talking maybe five stories high. And then it started terracing back as it started getting closer to residential. It went from the apartments down to condos. And then from condos, the next block was townhomes. And then from there, the next block came to smaller cottages. And then from then on, it was single family residence. And so the gist I'm getting on this is we might be putting together another trip to bring some more counsel, and so I'd probably, I'll try, I'll try to get a couple seats on the plane for the planning commission and, and offer that to you when that time comes. So, but it was a real good trip. It, the mayor, uh, Dave, and uh, Brent went, and uh, it, it was very good. They like those ideas. They, I think, they're getting the vision that staff's trying to get, and so we'll try to involve you on, on the future trips and so you can help see the what we're trying to do as well that's all i have great thank you sounds interesting you can google Orinco station sorry just one more thing with with the wrinkle station hillsboro the, the whole gist of this was is that this was all vacant land which it'd be great if we had vacant land here but the city of Hillsborough had this vision almost 30 years ago. They planned it, and they stuck to that vision. And that's what we're trying to say is we're trying to, to come up with a vision of State Street to re revitalize it, beautify it, help, help our businesses grow and prosper into the future. And we'd like to come up with this a good enough vision that we can stick to and make it happen. Uh, it was very interesting. Staff went up there about a year ago to make sure everything was good. And we met the actual planner that had been there from day one. It's a lady, and she was retiring the day that we, <laughs> we walked through with her. And to hear her talk about this, it was unbelievable. You know, this was our vision. We fought hard to get it approved and everything. And then a lot of developers came in and tried to do something different. And the council said, no, this is our vision. We're sticking to it. And then 25 years later, they get this beautiful development that people are just happy with, citizens and businesses and uh, stuff. It, it's, it's pretty pretty cool. Great. Thank you. Okay. If there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. I move that we adjourn. Mr. Cochran has moved, and I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's everybody. <laughs>